All right, it's been a time from BT. Hey everyone. Hi everyone. Good morning. Good evening. Good morning. Good hey, Everyone. By the way, Happy Lunar New Year. Yeah, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Year. <laughs> <laughs> excited, Happy New Year. So year of the rabbit or cat depends on which um, astrology culturally you follow. Uh, so, Kaushik, we have uh, two guests today, and we're ready for uh, a presentation on Tasca. <laughs> Whenever we want to start. Yeah, I was going to. I was pinging Sana on the side if she wanted to join. Uh, so, Tal, before you take it over, right? Uh, just a couple uh, things that I wanted to uh, uh, remind everyone. In the last meeting uh, last week, uh, we had discussed about focusing on more specific user stories for the release one. So there has been some background activity. Sana, I believe, has also been coordinating. I have shared some templates of defining user stories crisply. Uh, I heard from Sana offline that she will target to get the homework completed with a, with a few subset of you by end of next week. And then we should discuss in the following uh, cigar or hopefully offline. So I just wanted to let the group know uh, what, what I would request each of you to do is if you have based on the user scope that we defined for our one. Hello, can you guys hear me? Yeah, yes. Kashi. Go ahead. Can you hear yeah, sorry. Uh, I, yeah, so what I was saying was if, if each of you have your inputs around defining user stories, uh, please do uh, you know share your document with, with the details so we can take those as key inputs. Uh, we'll need to move very quickly on this given the R1 release is you know, not, not that far away. So just, you know, letting the community know here. Uh, that's the major update in terms of timeline.
All right. Uh, Tal, take it over, please. All right, thank you. Um, so we have uh, two guests today. Uh, uh, and I'll ask them to introduce themselves quickly. Uh, the presentation today is about cloud native Tosca. It is, uh, uh, we would say in the Tosca community that we've always been cloud native. So it will be organized more or less as a, a friendly discussion between three of us uh, collaborators in the, the Tosca uh, TC and ad hoc committee. Uh, where we've been working very hard on Tosca 2.0 for a few years now. So we will give our own thoughts about what makes Tosca Cloud Native and specifically how it could be used uh, in Nefio. Um, so uh, you all know me, uh, Tal from Google. Uh, we have with us Colleen Coresco from Ericsson and Chris Lowers, who's our uh, Tosca TC chair and uh, he's from Ubicity. Do you guys wanna introduce yourselves quickly? Yeah, uh, sure. This is Chris Lowers. Thanks, uh, Tal. There's not a whole lot more to say here than uh, what you already mentioned. I, I, um, I am the chair of the, or the co-chair of the Tosca Oasis um, TC, Colin's um, uh, co-editor. So the two of us are responsible, responsible for maintaining the specification. I run a small company called Ubicity, and we provide consulting services and technology for orchestration, largely based on Tosca. Colin. Yes, so my name is Kalin Kuresko. I'm working in Ericsson with um, <clears throat> cloud and orchestration and, and uh, such feature. i am uh, been working with Tosca now for almost five years. Uh, also, you know, joined and then participated to the 1.3 and as, as Tal was saying, working really hard to, to, to get a new 2.0 specification out and uh, yeah. This was an interesting thing. Thanks, so, so we will uh, really, I have a few slides to show. Um, I think most people here are familiar with Tosca. I'll do a very brief overview. And then we're, we're gonna talk about some of the things that make Cloud Tosca native, uh, <laughs> Tosca Cloud native, and specifically what uh, Tosca 2.0 brings to the table. So first for people who do not know what it is. <laughs> Uh, it is, stands for Topology and Orchestration Specification for Cloud Applications. It's an OASIS Open standard. Uh, OASIS is a pretty, OASIS Open is a pretty interesting um, uh, uh, standards body, right? You, you can use standards from there without any royalties or licensing agreements. That's what, what makes it open. Uh, Tosca itself is a YAML-based, object-oriented, strictly typed graph modeling language for declarative orchestration. That's a mouthful. I'll, I'll give you uh... Oh, uh, sorry, what did, somebody said something? A blip, okay. So we, we, will, we will show you a, a, a very brief, so you'll see how it looks actually, some Tosca, some Tosca code. <clears throat> Uh, some unique features of it. It does runtime and design time. Um, there's, uh, we'll, we'll talk about relationships probably a bit later. It's very composable. It's designed for connecting topologies together as well uh, in, in various ways. I'm sure Chris will have quite a bit to say about that. Um, it includes a packaging specification that has been used a lot in, in telco called CSAR, a cloud service archive. And uh, Yes, so, uh, the current release is 1.3, but we are working very hard on 2.0 and uh, it will be released this year, I am sure. Um, show you a quick example, just so you see how kind of Tosca looks. Um, so here is uh, an example I did a while ago, but it's still relevant, I think, of a network service for telephony. And uh, just brief overview of what it, what it models, it is a multi-cluster there's a central cluster, there's an edge cluster. It uses a, a PBX for telephony. Um, it configures an adjacent router. It creates a WAN connection between the two clusters, um, configures a switch to. <laughs> there's quite a lot going on here. This is all on Kubernetes, right? These are two Kubernetes clusters. And this actually works. I've demoed this a few times before and you can connect SIP phones to it and it does work on Kubernetes. It uses the Asterix PBX. Uh, what, what's interesting here for Nephi, this might look impressive. <laughs> I would humbly say that it is impressive to see it running, uh, but it is, doesn't go as far as Nephio does. 
Uh, all of this is just workloads that are not integrated with hardware or anything else. This is why a rather simple network function was chosen for, for telephony that doesn't have a very high uh, uh, requirements from the infrastructure, or actually none, <laughs> to be honest. Just a regular uh, Kubernetes workload. Nephew would bring in the, the vertical integration that's necessary to interact actually with the hardware. Um, but that said, the network service, here's some Tosca for you. So this is the, the network service itself. Tasca is in YAML. Uh, we import a few profiles. We'll talk a little bit about them, one for network services, one for telephony, one for orchestration. So these give us our basic types that we can assemble our topology from. Uh, we have, here's our topology template, which has no templates in it. And uh, at this level of abstraction, we're not even saying, uh, we're just saying that it's a type PBX. We're not even mentioning what is the network function implementing this. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff here to configure it more generally. So these are agnostic properties that belong to any PBX. Here we say we specify the requirements that will be turned into relationships with other uh, nodes. Here's the edge node. Um, there are different kinds of requirements. There's one for the trunk, the SIP trunk. There's another for the data plane. Then uh, I wanted to demonstrate some policy-driven uh, orchestration here. So there are a few policies saying how we would provision these on which sites, things like that. <laughs> uh, I won't go into detail here. Just to show you how an actual network function look, that was the network service. The network function includes a lot of the same profiles, but also has a Kubernetes profiles here that helps it actually say which, uh, so, so here, he, here it actually implements the, the network function itself using the regular Kubernetes stuff. <laughs> uh, of course, with all these Tosca additions, like uh, interfaces to configure things, all these artifacts, container images packaged inside, scripts configurations. What's interesting here is sub substitution mapping. So this says that this whole template here, this whole topology can turn into a single node type. So, the whole topology itself is, is, can be abstracted as a PBX. Uh, and anyway, there's more here, but I, I won't get into it. I just wanted to show you how Tosca looks. Um, and briefly, I want to address a few misconceptions <laughs> because part of the issue with people already knowing what Tosca is that there are a few opinions about uh, uh, what Tosca can do and what it is for. And, I think uh, us in the Tosca community have been struggling against this. And uh, on the one hand, it's really great that Tosca has been adopted, but it's often not adopted for uh, ways that uh, implement its full potential. <laughs> so first of all, I, I think a lot of uh, people come to Tosca thinking, well, this is a, a language that lets you write once run everywhere. And Especially in Tosca 2.0, as you'll see, we're, we're saying really not necessarily. Tosca used to come with something, something called the simple profile, which uh, was modeled a generic cloud, a cloud that doesn't exist really, <laughs> a cloud that could be any clouds. It had things like compute units. It had things like uh, links. But th the idea that some people had was that you can write something using the simple profile and deploy it on Google, Amazon, Microsoft, et cetera. That never quite worked very well. <laughs> uh, and um, right now with Tosca 2.0, it no longer comes with a simple profile. And we're saying you bring your own profiles and, and there's a whole bunch of them um, uh, contributed by the community and, and more in progress, right? Uh, the second misconception is that Tosca is really for high level topologies, things like network services. And we'd like to say absolutely not true. You just saw, for example, modeling a network function uh, on Kubernetes directly. So we, we can definitely model low level software components and that's actually a very common use case for Tosca. I made a presentation once about how you can model a data center, your, your infrastructure itself with Tosca. So the thing is we see topologies everywhere in the cloud. So, and, and Tosca can use them. It's just a different profile at a different level. Um, finally, <laughs> this is a bit related for people who come from the Etsy world and used to seeing Tosca CSARs packaging some sort of Tosca descriptor, while the other, the actual implementation is an artifact inside that CSAR. So it could be a heat template, it could be a Helm chart, a Terraform plan, 
uh, things like that. And we'd like to say not necessarily. So uh, again, you, you don't have to include other artifacts. You can stay Tosca all the way and model at every single level from infrastructure all the way to network service and beyond. <laughs> um, very brief history, just to, to put it in context. Uh, I like to divide it into those first formative years. And there's a prehistory to this as well, but there was a time when everybody suddenly realized the, the value of declarative orchestration. And in a few years, we saw a lot of activity there. It was the release of Kubernetes 1.0, um, but also an OpenStack heat became uh, a very important component there for, for declarative orchestration of, of OpenStack. And it was during this time that Tosca 1.0 was published. And I have a fantasy in my head that if, if Tosca was just published a, a year or two earlier, it might have found its way into Kubernetes 1.0 as its native language <laughs> for orchestration. I think that would have given us a very powerful meta model for Kubernetes. But as it stands, we're still all dealing in uh, declarative orchestration and embracing it today. This is part of what Nephew is about as well. Uh, later, we saw really Tosca coming into uh, various parts of the industry, right? There was the OpenStack Tacker project that some of you might be familiar with, which was a little bit related to Heat, but using Tosca instead of Heat and addressing the telco industry. Uh, Tosca finally moved to YAML. It really started off as XML. Uh, companies were founded that we were really focusing on Tosca and Etsy. The uh, SOL001 adopted Tosca using something called the simple profile for NFE, which is probably where a lot of you know uh, about Tosca from. Um, and what's new, <laughs> Tosca 2.0. So uh, Colleen and Chris, please join with me <laughs> with comments. Um, I, I would say that the, the big thing we're, that we're doing is it's a major leap forward in quality, precision, and usability. A lot of work has gone into combing through uh, the spec very, very carefully and making sure that this is a eminently implementable spec, uh, which is very clear, encourages portability, and, and uh, is powerful. Um, one thing uh, I mentioned before is that we are now really embracing profiles very strongly. So the idea that, yes, Tosca is just a language. It doesn't come with any opinion over which platform to support. You provide the, the profiles, and we want to provide first-class tools for packaging profiles and importing them. And we've done a lot of work to, to really improve that in Tosca. Uh, we're working on a unified expression language for Tosca. So Tosca has been a little bit messy <laughs> in terms of uh, uh, where it could use functions, where it could use constraints, uh, where it can use selectors. And now I think it's going to be much more coherent and much more powerful. We're allowing for custom functions, for example. So the language itself becomes extensible. Uh, Tosca Path is a way inspired by XPath and, and, and other similar paths and kind of XML and YAML languages, a way within the topology to refer to values. So you can travel within the path because remember, we're dealing with a graph database, so it's not just hierarchical. Uh, so we, we're working on a language that lets you traverse the, that, that path. Uh, a request that Tosca has had for a long time is to support tarballs and as part of the CSAR format. So you can still use zip, which is the traditional way, but uh, tarballs allow for stream decoding, which is far more efficient at scale. Uh, and, and yeah, we're working on a whole bunch of other things like an event model and uh, improvements to operations and notifications. And, and that's also coming in the pipeline. So those are the slides I wanted to show, but I wanted to stop here and, and let my uh, fellow collaborators jump in uh, and turn it into really a, uh, an open conversation about how we think that Tosca can really work uh, well in the cloud native telco cloud. <laughs> uh, I wrote down a few talking points, but I'm sure my colleagues have others. Yeah, if there's no so, questions, uh, maybe, I, uh, was there a question? Did I? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, just oh, one sure. question. Thanks, Tal. Uh, <clears throat> so, you mentioned that Tasca could be used all the way from all the way from the top, depending your. You said you you, you, I, I, you also represented the whole data center using Tasca. So I understand that point. I understand the capability uh, from that. 
but I wanted to ask you at this point of time in practice, what is the sweet spot for Tasca? Is it defining network services? Is it defining network functions or is it defining the entire end-to-end -end flow? Where does it, in practice, it fits at this point of time? Um, uh, the question is two ways, Tasca 1.x and going forward, uh, Tasca 2.2 as well. Same question for both of both of them. Yeah, any anybody else want to take it? I can answer. <laughs> Well, the, the, uh, maybe I, uh, let me take a stab. This is Chris. Um, um, so the, the challenge I think we've, we've had with Tosca, um, to some extent, it comes from the Tosca name itself. It's, uh, Tosca stands for uh, Orchestration Specification for Cloud Applications, which suggests sort of the, um, um, a focus on the application layer or the service layer, um, which when Tosca was first um, created, was uh, filled a void. It, it, it was a standardized, standardized language for deploying uh, software applications primarily on infrastructure as a service cloud, clouds, and do that in a, in a way that was independent of whether it was OpenStack or Heat or, uh, or, or Amazon or whatever else at the time. Um, but I think the, the, um, the unique benefit that Tosca brings is the fact that um, the basic abstraction in basic abstractions in Tosca are not really tied to cloud abstractions. It, it's not about computes, it's not about containers, it's not about um, uh, network functions or network services. The basic abstractions in Tosca are about graphs, where those graphs consist of nodes and relationships between those nodes. And both the nodes and the relationships are first class entities in the language. And the reason that this graph-based focus is so important is that that means that all the dependencies of services um, and of the infrastructure on which those services depend is can be built into um, what the models that are constructed using the language. And um, w w with virtualization, sort of the whole uh, concept of layering is, is, has been disrupted. You can have layer two on top of layer three. You can have um, um, resources that are delivered as services. So the concept of what's a resource, what's a service, what's a higher level layer, what's a lower level layer uh, uh, is, is sort of out of the window. Um, but with Tosca, you can actually model those dependencies between higher level concepts that depend on lower level concepts, which then in turn can be provided as, um, as infrastructure components to something else. And capturing those dependencies in the graph is important uh, when you start dealing with failure conditions where um, or load conditions where where one service may impact something else um, which if you narrowly look at one service definition that's not visible but if you follow the dependencies in the top, in the in the in the graphs um, a life cycle management system or an orchestrator can figure that out so the long answer to um, uh, to get to the point which is that there really isn't a sweet spot the benefit of Tosca is that it can span all these different layers and span the different sweet, pots, sweet spots to um, expose dependencies, which in the end is the main thing that, um, uh, or the main gap that uh, Tosca fills, which is the um, sort of the capturing of the of, of the dependencies between different components. Mm. I could I could add that, uh, for instance, you know, I mean, to this question, you can have, you know, after you have found, let's say, a certain host for, for a certain service, you can have a hosted on relationship between that particular uh, piece of software or service or whatever it is on that particular host. But then you could have a connect to towards, you know, via a certain network to another uh, site. And, and you can have, you know, all these relationships, which could be horizontal and vertical that you can basically navigate and, and extract information from that. For instance, uh, if you want to build a, you know, instantiation uh, workflow or, or, or know what, you know, what order to, 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 to run things when you deploy, then you could, you know, uh, follow a depends on relationship that, or you can follow uh, relationships in general and because the relationships are directed, they will give you, you know, if you follow them in the opposite direction, they will give you the, um, the instantiation order, but this is not the only thing you can. So the idea is that, that this 
uh, mechanisms, like you know, uh, requirements that go to capabilities. By the way, the the relationships are not created necessarily node from node to node, but it's created from a node that has a certain requirement to certain capability. And then other nodes, they can you know, implement those capabilities and then be targeted. And then you have a way to select them uh, at, uh, at the deployment time. So dynamically based on different capabilities and characteristics. And by the way, these functions that we are working on in 2.0 is going to expand the possibility to use all kinds of Boolean tests in order to be able to expand this mechanism. So, so I would say just to complement what, what Chris was saying that <clears throat> the, the, the fact that the model itself is keeping all this information and then you can use that model to perform different tasks, you can use it to, 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 do, to, to create the order of, of, of uh, orchestration or management, you can use it to do uh, logging, you can use it to do even, even some sort of you know, uh, graphs out of it and so on is, is kind of the strength of this, um, this uh, you know, I would say model-based uh, language. Um, I'll, I'll add one more point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, what, what's really critical for me, I mean, you, you can say that a lot of languages offer similar things, but unifying everything under one language, I think, is a powerful thing here. Uh, GitOps, for example, which is, uh, we're all happy with GitOps now because it brings together a lot of very disparate systems into one place, one repository. But GitOps, in a way, solves a problem that the industry has created. The fact that we have subsystems that are just using different paradigms and different things. At the end of the day, they use text files. Uh, some of them are YAML-based, some of them are, are JSON, some of them, like HCL, are, are unique to them. They're all in one place, but they don't talk to each other. They're different universes. We force them together in one repository, but they're different. If we use Tosca for all these different layers, we can create semantic connections between our different text files. Uh, suddenly, they're related, right? It's not just that they're in one place, which is what a Git repository gives us, but that they're, they're actually one semantic hole which they are, because that's why they, we put them there. <laughs> um, any other questions? I just had one question, like, um, how do you, uh, who manages the conversion of uh, these, um, you know, uh, I mean, going from uh, the end-to-end the -end service definition to the actual, uh, say, either it's Kubernetes API or uh, OpenStack APIs, uh, are those controllers kind of uh, uh, handled by operators themselves or who handles that, uh, that conversion between those uh, standard APIs? Yeah, I, th I think this is a question about roles and how roles work in Tosca. Uh, it, I think it relates to a lot of what we just said. Um, anybody else want to, de to go into depth <laughs> on that? Chris, maybe? Um, so there's a couple different... Um... Um, at, at the risk of getting a little too abstract too quickly, um, there's a couple different ways that Tosca um, uh, supports this. Um, Tosca has, um, as Tal said, allows you to define services at a fairly abstract level, um, meaning without consideration for specific technologies being used or specific or vendor specific implementations of those technologies. Um, so, for example, the, what the example tells showed, showed a, a PBX with phones. Um, uh, those are fairly abstract, um, but then Tosca allows you to decompose abstract nodes into more fine-grained topologies that ultimately use um, technology-specific and vendor-specific implementations that can, that can provide implementations for those abstract nodes. And that's done using a feature that we call substitution ma mapping. So the substitution mapping is one way of getting down from the or getting from the top level, high level abstraction, down to ultimately uh, configurations that need to be applied to specific hardware or software entities out in the real world, using whatever APIs are available for those um, external entities, whether that be Kubernetes APIs or uh, uh, NetConf or RESTConf to the to configure uh, networking devices. So. So that, that drill down using substitution mapping is typically the first way to get down to, um, to the point where you can apply hardware and software configurations to real devices. 
Then the second part to the answer is that um, using the Tosca language, one would typically define types for nodes that represent um, uh, abstractions into the external devices, into either hardware or software devices. Um, Tosca has a concept of interfaces associated with those, um, with those node types. Interfaces are collections of operations that one can call on those um, nodes that would get translated into API calls to those specific uh, devices. And interface operations have implementations which are provided using artifacts um, uh, bundled with, with, um, with those node types and bundled inside the CSR def, um, uh, packages that a, um, a vendor would, uh, uh, would provide. So there's encapsulation where the implementations for specific node types get bundled with, um, uh, with the node type itself. Um, so if you, uh, you're, you're a, a router vendor, you might um, provide an implementation uh, that invokes the NetConf APIs to those, um, to those devices so that it can be used by an orchestrator. Uh, and that modularity provided by that encapsulation allows you in, in, in a template to divide, define the topology of your application without having to take in, um, without really having to worry about what ultimately will get called from an implementation and an API point of view to communicate with those devices. That said, uh, so, the, so, the, so the point I'm making is that it's the vendor of the device that will typically um, uh, provide the, the mechanism for translating the, the standard interfaces that are being called on the device into API calls or scripts or whatever else is used to interface with the device. That said, the service template itself, the, 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 the document that compi combines the, the types that provide the building blocks into services or application topologies can override those implementations. So if an operator wants to um, uh, change the implementation or tweak the implementation, they could do that by providing interface operations in the service template itself um, by providing different artifacts. So typically it's the vendor who will do that translation, but an operator can override those implementations as well. Yeah, I'll, I'll add quickly, there, there's a big difference. So at different levels, there can be different roles, right? If the question is who does what, uh, a vendor can create a profile for their equipment. A cloud provider can create a profile, profile for, for their cloud, right? And each one of these domains has its own semantics. All of them can have different interfaces, different relationships. They're all graphs though. <laughs> and you can import all these profiles together into your service template. Uh, Tosca is object-oriented, right? So you can override anyone with things specific for your type. Uh, we're working very hard in Tosca 2.0 to make the uh, what we call refinement of those types very, very strict, strictly typed. That is, if a vendor gives you a type for a specific uh, functionality piece <laughs> of a network function, you can extend it, but only within the limitations that, that they gave you, right? So, so the final thing is valid, right? You cannot do anything that the vendor would not allow you to do. If you want to, you have to create your own profile, which you can do. So, so there's a lot of flexibility here in, in terms of defining who is in charge of what and who is in charge of what level. And the, the composability feature of Tosca that, that Chris was really emphasizing is how you bring all these things together, right? So you can have different roles and the solution architect at the end could bring together uh, the work of, <laughs> of many different departments in the company, including third parties. Just, just want to, to kind of mention that there is a difference, and you know, there, there's the types and the, <clears throat> and the basically uh, derivation of those. But then the compositionality is with 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 um, uh, requirements and with the substitution mapping. So you basically decompose big objects into smaller objects. There are two different mechanisms that kind of complement each other. So, so they are not uh, the same mechanism. By the way, Tal, there is a lot of people that raise their hands. So maybe. Oh, uh, you can sorry. go to that list. Uh, otherwise, you know, <laughs> I, I'm not, not getting good. any. Uh, yeah, sorry, I'm not getting any notification. I apologize. Uh, and I, I'm not organizing the meeting. So if any, <laughs> anybody wants to. Uh, yeah, I think it's uh, I think Anne, no, oh. but not Kaushik, Wadi, and Vance. I think in that order. If, uh, if I had to believe my Zoom screen. <laughs> yeah, I. how do I actually see a list of the queue here? Uh, you open the participants uh, window yeah. and then you will, um, 
Um, I, I think let's start with that. I think that's if I and you have can you go to question? Yeah. Um, so I used to work for Telf and that conf and rest conf and yang were the thing, right? And I'm it's still fuzzy in my mind. So please explain again if you how NetConf and uh, I mean how Yang and Tosca interrelate in your mind, especially Tosca 2.0. Uh, uh, Tal, I can I can answer this question. Well, first you can go ahead if you. No, no, go ahead. Yeah. So so I would say that primarily uh, NetConf. Uh, so primarily Yang uh, and as it used by NetConf is a configuration language. So basically you have a certain a set of devices or a device that you want to configure. And then Yang is a structured um, way of expressing the configuration to this. And then NetConf is going to give you the protocol on how to apply this configuration to the device. So, so this protocol allows you to, you know, to, to, to have rollbacks, to, to apply all the changes at once, and to, to, to have the semantics on how to, how to apply this. Um, Tosca is not, you know, it has configuration, it has properties, it has attributes, but it's not um, only a configuration language in the sense that um, it, uh, it tries to model natively the objects that your system is composed of. And, and there is no clear definition of what, it's exactly what you think that these objects are, which, which we are calling nodes and which are, are being part of this graph. Then, then, then basically offering these operations that are connected to the nodes and, and basically assuming that during, at some point during the orchestration management, you want to traverse the graph in a sense, in a, in a different manner, either from the leaves to the root or from the roots to the leaves or following different relationships. You can follow this, uh, we call it representation graph. And then you can, you can execute the operations that are defined in these interfaces in Tosca at each node or as, as, you, as you find fit. So from that point of view, Tosca is not a language that is just for configuration. I think it has been really used like this um, in, in, you know, by different, um, in different uh, occasions, especially in Etsy and AV, the, the the emphasis in, is on the on the structure of these objects as on, on the configuration, but but the idea is that um, the core, at least how I see it, and some, some also also some of my colleagues, is that is that this relationship graph and the information which exists in the model that you can traverse and query is and 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 can execute on is the core of Tosca. I hope I, I answered your question. So to follow up, let's say I have, um, I you know Cisco Telf, mm -hmm. um, network devices, right? CSR one thousand or one kV, mm -hmm. um, and I model it in in Yang, and I have it running operationally on top of the rack in my data center, mm -hmm. a set of them. Mm -hmm. Now, if I I mean I've used Yang to Tosca, um conversion tool before, mm -hmm. but it's still unclear from a Tosca top-down point of view, how I would reach down to operate on that tour if I need to, you know, change the configuration or layering a new network firewall rule. And by the way, we've, we've used Yang to model services also, not just configuration of devices. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's always been a struggle in my head how I would use Tosca to you know, add a uh, network firewall yeah. service or something. Uh, uh, maybe to, to sort of to um, um, build on top of what Kalin said. So you can think of Yang really as a, um, a data modeling language. It defines schemas mm -hmm. mostly for, with the goal of making sure that um, when you communicate data across some, some protocol, some network connection, that the sender and the receiving receiver have the same information about the data that are being exchanged. Whereas Tosca is a system modeling language, not, not a data modeling language, but a system modeling language where a description of a system is fed into an orchestrator 
so that an orchestrator can realize that system. So very different purposes, very different objectives. And um, that means that um, the, the abstractions in, um, in Tosca are very different than the abstractions in Yang. In Yang, it's about data types, it's about uh, container types, it's about uh, creating complex data types based on primitive data types. Um, it's about in a, um, containment and what have you, but it's all about the data. In Tosca, the abstractions are the graphs, meaning the nodes and the relationships. And yeah, you, you could use Yang to basically emulate what's in Tosca, but you do that rather than by, by leveraging abstractions that are part of the language. You do that by coming up with conventions that say, look at the top of my tree in Yang, um, I have service components <laughs> just because I say so, not because the Yang language actually tells you so. Uh, and that's the main difference between um, um, uh, using Yang for modeling services versus Tosca for modeling services. In Tosca, the service abstractions are built into the language. In, um, in, in Yang, they're based on sort of conventions or, 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 or external documentation that says, look, these parts in my tree uh, define services, and then everything underneath defines configurations of those services. So, uh, I, understand, so, I understand the difference. The, the, maybe we right, so, so let me get to the second. Understand. Let me get to the second part of your um, of your um, of your question. Uh, so this is slightly challenging to to um, explain without uh, pictures, and maybe at some point we'll have a chance to do an, this in a little bit more detail. But let's now assume that we have a service description that's modeled as a graph in Tosca, meaning we have a set of nodes. Uh, and a set of relationships between those nodes. Um, conceptually, um, when you feed that description into an orchestrator, that orchestrator will try to realize that description by, um, by running what in Tosca we call a workflow, or though it, although it's, it's, um, it's not necessarily similar to a, um, um, uh, a workflow system like Mistral or something else, anything else that you may be familiar with. What we mean is that um, an orchestrator will call a set of operations, uh, potentially all at the same time, but potentially sequenced in a way that is uh, determined by dependencies encoded in the dependency graph. If there's a containment relationship, for example, in your uh, dependency graph, you need to make sure that the entity that contains some other uh, some other entity exists before the contained and this entity is created. So there's some some dependency order that may be taken into account when you try to uh, deploy and 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 create instances. So we we use um, uh, generally we use the term workflow to to describe that, but it's not it's different than a traditional workflow engine. It's sort of intelligent ordering if and when necessary. That um, workflow then will call operations on inter on specific nodes, where the Tosca language will um, will define um, in the in the types of the of the nodes and the relationships. The Tosca language will uh, allow the type designer to define what the supported operations are that are part of the interfaces on that um, uh, on that node. And the workflow uh, engine inside Tosca will call those operations. And when an operation is called in, in Tosca, it'll um, have an associated artifact, again, defined using the Tosca language that needs to be executed or processed in order to make things happen. And the typical examples that we often use in, this, in the spec are um, examples where those artifacts are shell scripts that get executed. But you could also have um, artifacts that are Ansible playbooks or artifacts that are API calls that need to get executed. So it's the, 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 the designer of those types, which is often the vendor of the device that's being controlled, will provide the artifacts that provide the implementations um, to, that, are, that can then be called by the orchestrator. And if um, that artifact um, is, or if even, even a rest conf or a net conf call needs to be made, then likely that artifact can consists of an associated Yang file that defines the data model for making that uh, that net conf call. 
so Tusca has no opinions about what exactly will be done in order yeah. to um, uh, to execute operations, but it has um, a rich set of mechanisms that allow vendor specific implementations for those operations that can all get bundled with the profiles that are provided by the vendors and made available to service designers. So, so in some sense, coming back as a very quick uh, example, if, if you have like uh, this, this uh, top of the rack switch, or I don't know what you wanted to model, this will, in a, in a, in a template that, that this one <coughs> will have, uh, you know, where you model may, maybe the, the network topology, this will be a node. And that node will have a certain configuration that you can push when you when you create it, and also set certain operations that you can call while doing your these workflows that Chris was talking about. And these operations they could basically push different configurations further. And in addition to this, you can further model this by having another template where this particular switch and so on could have several other nodes representing different functionality in that particular switch, which will be then modeled. And then you have some precedents by, by having some relations uh, between them and so on, each with their own operations, which then can be called in order to, to push the configuration or change or modify it and so on. So I don't know if, if, if this could, could give you this image, but, but this is how you would model it in Tosca. I yield the floor to the other people since Thanks. my question seemed to have taken up a lot of time, but thank you. Yeah, I think Bernard is next. Time. Okay, I already sort of mentioned sort of my uh, thoughts here also in the chat, but um, basically sort of reality shows that whatever type of modeling language is made available, people try to model, be it configurations, sort of infrastructure or network functions and services with the modeling language which they have at hand. And it depends on the tooling, whether this is successful or not. I do be don't believe that we will, in the NEFIO project, be able to replace uh, sort of uh, the, the Kubernetes manifests with Tosca 2.0, even if it's a great language. But I do believe that we can start discussing what kind of language elements would we like to see in the CRD to address some of the sort of the um, requirements which we have in real life implementations. And specifically on our side, we see that this. Uh, concepts of specifying requirements, capabilities, and interfaces would be very helpful if we could have them somehow be reflected in the CRDs and uh, sort of then made use of. Uh, what I would also like to mention is that this the concept of late binding. That means if we are trying to integrate solution elements from different suppliers, be it the network functions, the infrastructure elements, possibly different network function providers working, having to work together, we need to understand how this concept of late binding would work uh, in an easy way. That means sort of uh, in such a way that we do not have to have sort of huge architecture sessions uh, agreeing on the sort of attributes and parameters which need to be then put into the different uh, language models, but something where we can say we can abstract the inter interfaces and then sort of rather have an sort of integration approach, which is fairly standardized. Um, that, that, this is a really great question and point. <laughs> I'll, I'll take a stab and say, uh, well, yeah, I, I don't think anybody is expecting Kubernetes or Nephio <laughs> to, to, to suddenly do everything in Tosca immediately. Um, this is more about how can we make Nephio uh, friendly to existing orchestrating systems? And a common language is one way to do it. Um, um, there have been a lot of questions, of course, in the Nephew community about, well, what about network services, right? We, we've defined network services to not be in scope, but questions about it keep bleeding in because we know network functions in themselves, yes, Nephew can help deploy them, but at the end of the day, we're deploying them for a purpose and we need to configure them uh, in tandem with the semantics of the network service in which they exist. We expect there to be higher levels, right? But we also expect Nephio to reach up to those higher levels and, and help that uh, linkage happen. Um, and I do think Tosca can help with that. Um, you know, I am putting here on the screen, you know, I have worked, probably some of you know of it, of an operator for Kubernetes that can use uh, a Tosca natively. So I think there is the option to do that. 
Um, and it is one way that we can create, you know, at the end of the day for, for Nefio, it only cares about KRM, getting those resources in, whether they come from a Helm chart or whether they come from a GitOps repository with Porch. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. We get a set of Kubernetes resources. So I'm just presenting one way that they could come from Tosca if that's preferable for a certain environment. From Nefio's perspective, it's agnostic to that. It only cares about the, those Kubernetes resources. Uh, finally, a point, you made a very, very powerful point that I hope we keep going back to about late binding. I think that's a word I've been struggling to bring into the conversation for a while. Um, a big part of cloud nativeness <laughs> is late binding. The idea, you have to have late, late binding in a declarative world, right? If you remember, I gave a presentation a while ago about a meta scheduler. Part of the problem it's trying to solve is this idea of late binding. Um, we declare all our resources at once, right? We, in the declarative world, there is no workflow. Everything is, is late binding in Kubernetes. Everything is late binding in, a, in the declarative world, in the fully declarative world. So you assume that you declare the resources and that something, or even the resources themselves, if they're truly cloud native, will know how to make those bindings between each other. What Tosca does, it gives those semantics, right? Because relationships exactly. are first class citizen. Yes. Um, so you, you could actually model pathways for those late bindings. Something that I like to say a lot about relationships with Tosca, they're, they're not actually connections, they're potentials for connections. Right? We're, we're drawing streets, we're not drawing uh, links. Cars can go down those streets, right? So, so when you have a topology, when you have a graph, right, that needs to be implemented in the real world, right? It could be a service mesh, it could be a data plane, it could be a, a top of the rack VLAN switch configuration, right? But until those are actually actuated, th that is the graph, right? We are modeling a graph rather than implementing a graph, if that makes sense. Yeah. Tell, I fully agree with you. My question basically is, yes, we need in order to model those dependencies, these relationship and capabilities mechanisms, which Tosca already has in place. And my mm -hmm. question basically is, how would we incorporate that into our production models? That means uh, actually, how, would we capture that in KRMs? Would we try to sort of put that into Tosca? I believe it would be great if the Nephew Initiative could agree on approach where we sort of say this is how for instance these capabilities and relationships will be sort of provided by the vendors this is how we bring them together in the context of our production procedures etc this is something where we need a bit of guidance because otherwise this will always be handcrafted solutions which only work once Mm. Uh, just just to complement this i think this is a great question because i think this is one of the strengths of tosca that when you create uh, basically a relationship between a, <clears throat> a requirement node and a, a, a capability node, you do this with late binding in the sense that there are mechanisms uh, uh, that uh, like a, it's called node filter, where you can filter the potential targets based on data that is dynamic and that is, is just in time delivered either via a graph traversal or via the inputs to your um, basically uh, system. So basically when you create your topology graph, this is going to be created in a different way every time based on the input and uh, on the topology graph itself. I, I, I hope I could summarize it very quickly for uh, what, yeah, what the I, I, are. Yes, I, I agree. The only thing which I would like to see is that in the Nephew project, we agree on how we capture that in a consistent way. Yeah, and sort of, it all depends also on the tooling which we have in place in order to support that approach. But uh, I, I believe that here in our team, we should try to come up with a notion of, yes, we want to have those relationships somehow modeled, but how would we do that? Yeah, this Thanks. is part of the challenge for us. So somebody asked whether this is a, a proposal or a presentation. It's a presentation, right? Yeah. We, we don't <laughs> have a proposal in place here for, for what the Nephew project should do. This is more about uh, giving an opportunity to think about these topics and to offer a potential tool uh, language that, that could help. We don't know how it will actually work. The, the community is still new <laughs> and we're still figuring it it's out. But these are all the questions that we should be asking. Yep. Next is, I think in my, it says it's Kaushik. <laughs> 
Hey folks, no, partly this was, uh, I was listening into Bernard's question and the commentary. That was also what I had on mind. Uh, one key thing that would be useful is focused discussion on some of the topics that Bernard, you had raised about capabilities and interfaces. And I saw the side channel with uh, John and Wim and so forth. It'll be good to rule in or rule out what specific uh, uh, either models of Tosca and or so forth that we could adopt into Nephew. That's one aspect. The second thing, uh, Tal, you brought up about network services and a higher level construct. Maybe let's just put a placeholder there about what would be the uh, interplay between uh, Nephew and Tosca Tudoto in that uh, future world. But my immediate focus is the, you know, the first part that I just brought up. So it'll be good if somebody with, you know, both sides of the equation, meaning both Tosca knowledge base as well as participating in Nephew can help outline what specifics of what those key capabilities that Bernard had brought up are. Yeah, I'll add that uh, and also addressing John's comment too. You know, in, in SIG number two, we've been for a while now discussing a, a meta model. You know, what should we adopt? Uh, how should we organize our resources in relationship to each other? So in a way, uh, John is absolutely correct. All of this could be done in Kubernetes <laughs> with KRM. KRM has a, a very weak meta model, but you can create anything you want on top of it. Perhaps we can be inspired by Tosca, right? And, and maybe create a meta model for ourselves that in some, somehow is inspired by this. I'm not exactly sure, <laughs> right? I, I, I don't have a, a clear solution or vision for, for how this would work. Uh, but yeah, we, we need to turn it in a way into action items for ourselves on how to organize. This is part of what SIG number one is, is, is a task to do. <laughs> I think next is Wadi, if I... Yeah, thanks. I think I got my question answered during the conversation I was listening to. <laughs> so um, I don't have any other questions. Thanks. Next is okay, we, we have just a few minutes left, so... Um... Yeah, we have three more hands. Uh, oh, okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah, Wendy, Wendy, Wendy seems to have his hand up for a very long time. Yeah. <laughs> Wadi. Yeah, Vedi just uh, said he, he didn't have a question. I think it's Vance. Is this Vedi? Oh, okay, I made a mistake. I'm sorry. Vedi Vance. Okay. Um, so <clears throat> it, it it's fair to say, though, that the Tosca uh, complements the information models and data models of the, the various domains, right? It doesn't replace those in any way. Like for example, orchestration flows down, inventory flows up. You wouldn't use Tosca to replace inventory, right? So, so it's a it's a complementary thing. And and unless every application was converted to Tosca, we're always going to have um, a mapping of those data types and models to Tosca. Correct. Well, something that I've been doing, um, I, I think about that a lot, actually. <laughs> and I, I see Tosca in some systems working as another form of input. So you're, so you're right. You could model some things in Tosca and export them into a graph. And in your graph database, where, where it could be your source of truth. So you know, a lot of our inventories until now, I think a lot of them are, are kind of relational <laughs> tables, a bunch of tables. But if we start thinking of them as graph databases with semantic relationships, Tosca can generate some of it, but other parts of your system can generate other parts of it. So the, the Tosca world could be indeed complementary rather than to replace, right? The idea is not that you have to rewrite everything in Tosca, but you could, re, you could write things in Tosca that would interact with other things in the same place. Um, so that's another way of looking about it is Tosca is another tool. It doesn't have to be the Uber tool the tool that you use for everything. Um, it could fill in gaps with things that, uh, that you have difficulty doing. You know, so many projects end up at some point saying, we have all this configuration stuff, let's just throw it into a YAML. <laughs> and everybody ends up inventing their own kind of YAML, DSL, et cetera. The point here is, you know, we have all these, this long list of Tosca implementations. You can just use Tosca. <laughs> Right. Every time that you reach for YAML in the cloud, I say, think first, you know, there, there already exists a language. It's an open standard. It has a lot of implementations. It's portable. 
go for that. <laughs> so, so that's that's another way of think, thinking of Tosca's, just one more tool in your toolbox. Mm -hmm. I, I could complement a little bit here saying that uh, one of the, um, uh, one of the things that that you could you know you could enrich maybe maybe your orchestration system is is if for instance nodes and objects that you have in your inventory that have certain relationships and that have certain characteristics if you can apply on them the the you know the the, the if, if you had the Tosca orchestrator and you you would like to select a certain node that has certain uh, properties or, or a certain node that has a certain relationship to another node and so on, if you would expose this uh, towards the Tosca environment as a, as a graph, then, then that environment could, you know, uh, use it and, and, and traverse it and, and um, uh, find uh, the objects directly uh, with this uh, requirements, uh, you know, uh, and, and relationships. And it would, uh, you know, I mean, in some sense, they it, it would complement the, the the inventory in order to 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 support this kind of uh, model based or, or model graph uh, that is very useful when you try to understand what kind of actions and what kind of of, of things you have in your model. I think we're we're out of time. Um... Okay, I mean, Vadi and uh, Vim and Ravi, three hands are still raised, so. Yeah. What do you want to do, Tal? Uh, whatever the chairs want to do. <laughs> I, I'm merely a, a humble presenter here. Yeah, I mean, and Kaushik dropped, I think dropped, the chairs so. just left, I guess, so, yeah. Kaushik dropped, so I think. Uh, I I'm mean, fine to stay a little bit more if it's necessary. Yeah. I think Maybe. there's another meeting coming up, so yeah, we have another uh, call actually. Uh, I can just a couple of minutes, maybe just to make the yeah, maybe to question. Am I next, uh, Bala? Sure. So, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. see. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. One, I think I okay. What for me today in the KRM model, I think is uh, a very powerful is the divide and conquer, where I see today people that use Tosca do the opposite, so they describe a very complex relationship and the challenge is to maintain that and keep it up to date and stuff like that. So I'm wondering, does Tosca has something like uh, modeling, let's say, uh, let's say a complex service into pieces that then I should like a hierarchical relationship model that uh, I, for example, what you see in the, in the, uh, in the KRM and, and the controller world in Kubernetes, they have specific controllers that each independently manage their relationships mm. and it's the composition of all of it that makes things work, right? Whereas I, typically the way I, or I have seen people use Tosca, they want to describe all of that in one big Tosca model. And the result is to keep that up to date and to uh, manage that is, is a challenge. Well, yeah, I'm without... wondering what are the mechanisms in Tosca to, to, to do something like a more of a divide and conquer approach. This is the perfect question because I think that exactly this is the wrong way to use Tosca if you're modeling everything in one. Chris uh, and then. Yeah. No, Power absolutely. Is... I think, Wim, that is a, a, a very uh, a extreme misconception then because Tosca is designed to be modular, to encapsulate, um, and, and to support different roles. You have type designers who define sort of fine grained models for devices from which you can compose um, larger services and, and the, the components themselves can be the, uh, maintained independently from the services that use those components. So this composition, I think, is one of the key features built into Tosca. Uh, on top of that, Tosca supports decomposition, which is the other way around, where you have um, abstract nodes that can be decomposed into more fine-grained uh, topology. So that's another way of, of um, coming up with uh, divide and conquer um, uh, strategies where you, you you start from a high level of abstraction and you you drill down uh, possibly recursively into more fine-grained topologies so those are actually the <laughs> I, I think the perception I'm not sure where that perception comes from but the task is actually quite the opposite of what you're describing is designed with modularity and com composability and decomposability all part of the language as opposed to uh, uh, exposed by some external conventions 
Yeah, but it's also the way that those relationships are managed as an independent on an independent uh, execution engine as well. So in other words, I, what you see is that, okay, I think you can describe it in a hierarchical fashion, as you said, but then I, what you see is that you should also I layered the execution in a completely hierarchical uh, Absolutely, and, that, and that's an yeah. artifact of, of implementation. So for, uh, if, if uh, uh, Tosca, if you yes. use Tosca in its purest form, the orchestration semantics are actually built into the language. And you can build pure Tosca orchestrators that do nothing other than, uh, than execute commands in the language, just like any other programming language. And if you do that, you get exactly the effect that you're looking for, which is sort of the, 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 the independent management of the components and decomposing and delegating ultimately to, to some fine grained controllers. Unfortunately, if you look at implementations like Etsy, they don't take advantage of the semantics in uh, the orchestration semantics in the language because they had a predefined uh, orchestration model called Mano. And they're using Tosca just as an input format into Mono. And if you do that, you end up with um, with the approach that you're describing, which you, where you have an, yeah, a man. monolithic model that gets thrown over the wall and you lose all the benefits of Tosca. So that you're absolutely right, but that's just because it, Tosca is not used properly as opposed to a limitation. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that was exactly my question. I, the reason why I asked the question is I've seen people use it as a, let's say a monolith, but what you're uh, saying is that's exactly not what it's I, exactly. I, it's actually designed to yeah. not to do so. Okay. And, and and by the way, following up on a uh, comment earlier, if you if you're going to use Tosca just as an input descriptor into a pre-existing um, uh, uh, orchestration paradigm, then sure, go ahead and use Yang or whatever else. <laughs> but if you want to use, uh, if you want to get to the point you're getting to, which is decomposability, modularity, composability at deployment time, late binding. All those concepts are built into the Tosca language, but you only get advantage. You can only take advantage of those actually if you if you if you build an orchestrator that that actually knows how to interpret those those uh, those language constructs, um, yeah. and that's the challenge we're because, dealing with. So yeah. I don't think it's simple. I don't think it's as simple as taking Tosca concepts and seeing how how can I expose those into KRM or something similar. Because I'm afraid that if you do that, you lose some of the advantage of the semantics that you're getting from uh, from the Tosca language itself. Uh, but yeah, so Dal, just FYI, if you look to the function controller that we'll present on Wednesday, actually it uses Graph under uh, as its implementation. Yeah, I'm excited to uh, to see that. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Appreciate. It. Thanks. Oh. Uh, maybe final question from Ravi. Yeah, uh, my, my only comment was that I mean, uh, regarding this thing, what you talked about, Tal, it's 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 more, uh, uh, it's not a proposal, but I would like to see exactly, you know, what the proposal is, how this can be used in the context of Nephew, which is a domain controller, either from Open API perspective or some kind of uh, assistance that happens in the the SMO. Um, so yeah, I mean, it basically trying to, I'm I'm trying to understand exactly what is the problem that. Uh, Tosca can address that we cannot address through a KRM, which is yeah, which is what the kind of modeling we use today. So it would be good to kind of if you can add something, uh, a couple of slides, some use cases for nephew that would be a great addition. Just a comment. Thanks a lot. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. I, I think uh, from now on, uh, SIG number one is going to be devoted to R1 entirely. So we can mm -hmm. probably get back to this and think about. Uh, these topics of composability, et cetera, for uh, beyond R1. <laughs> I think our focus right now, this presentation was set up, uh, I think two months ago. So um, it's probably comes at not such a great time where we're really trying to uh, double down on, on R1 and plan the use cases. So I, I agree, but probably the, the, those, that kind of thinking in those slides to see how this could be incorporated would be postponed a little bit. <laughs> um, sure. Yeah, yeah, thank you so you. much, uh, Tal, uh, Chris, and Cal. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's 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 been it's been great presentation, great learning. Thank you, my fellow. It was our pleasure. Thank you. Uh, Thanks a lot. <laughs> All right. Bye, everyone. Okay, bye. 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 Thank you.